So, this video is how I did this monstrosity of a project of the moon gates. I did it all by myself, except for a little bit at the bottom I had some help with before the, the people who said they were gonna help kind of quit. They were like, this is too crazy, we're gonna leave this girl alone. And I had to finish it all by myself. So everything from maybe two feet up, I had to do by myself, uh, you know, but it was an enjoyable project and I hope you enjoy the video and feel free to like, subscribe, share. There's going to be more kind of interesting do-it-yourself videos coming from this channel because I usually do more unique, obscure, kind of crazy things. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So this video is documenting how I did the moon door. And starting from the beginning, I did a outdoor kitchen with a pizza oven. And one of the problems with the pizza oven was I need to insulate it. So I figured I need to insulate this pizza oven, so I might as well uh, do a dream moon door. The logic was uh, maybe not sound because it would have taken me a week to insulate the pizza oven the way it needed to necessarily be done. And it took me a long, long time to actually do the moon door. Because the moon door was so intricate and it needed to be completely stable, I did a foundation four feet below the ground, filled it with cement and rhubar so it could support itself um, for frost prevention because water can get down and freeze and push up the stone. And that's a big problem with stone walls in New England where I live. So it was four feet of deep of concrete where the moon door needed to be structurally stable. I then had two people help me and we built this frame out of wood uh, and two by fours go across. So it's basically plywood connected by two by fours. At first we had to use more two by fours to stabilize it and do the base around it. I quickly removed those once there were, it was locked in place with the stone because it was hard to get the stone around them. It was kind of cumbersome. So this is the time when my help decided they didn't really want to work on the project anymore. I think they exaggerated how much they knew honestly and this is when I started insulating the pizza oven, getting that done, getting it to temperature, which it reached. Um, that This seems like a whole different other project, but it was connected to the moon door and it kind of stabilizes it just in its mass. So I, I did that and then I also, around this time, decided, hey, I need to start filming this. This is kind of insane what I'm doing. So I got it to temperature and then got back up to the wall, uh, did another moon, moon window, and then I started filming. I have a separate video of how I did a peacock on a piece of marble. This is the marble, and this is me at the quarry. What I do is I go collect stones at a local quarry, and then I put my truck, and then I dump them out, and I make the wall. So I've probably done maybe 30, 40, 50 quarry runs, it seems. I don't know if that's an exaggeration or an accurate estimate. I go there a lot, sometimes twice a day. Those are usually really hard days.
So on the top, I dreamed of having a, a little area for planting. Um, succulents I thought would be a good choice and they are a good choice. And I also wanted morning glories and moonflowers, which are not a good choice because they're not really drought tolerant. So right now I've discovered the only thing that has worked has been succulents, but it's just a little bed area on top of the outdoor kitchen and the moon door to host some some wildlife and some plants and it really greens it up. I use a special mortar around that, the same mortar I used around the actual arches. And then I started planting up with all different succulents and it's really a cool effect. So this certainly is a project within a project. Uh, since I was doing the wall, I decided to have a, uh, a fountain coming out of the wall. I saw this in the RHS BBC Gardener's World exhibition in England, saw a video rather, and I just kind of had to have it. So I just stuck an irrigation pipe in the wall. And when I get to that stage of the design, I will put a, a fountain. So you're welcome to see this channel. There'll probably be a future video on that. Another project within the project is the stone carved peacock, which there's a video on this channel of that as well. And that I placed above as a mantelpiece above the outdoor kitchen, just above the pizza oven. Uh, it's a little bit charred now, but I, it could be washed off. It's marble, so it's fairly heat resistant. Here is one of the many loads of mortar mix that I use. I mostly use 80 pound mortar mix. I use some other um, stuff. I'll go over that in another little section of this video, but mostly it's 99% mortar mix, which is more affordable than the other specialty type of mortars.
it's a good time to go over the three different kinds of cement I'm going to be using for this project or have been using. Um, this is what I use mostly. It's the cheapest one out of the three and it's a, it's a mortar and that's what I use for the walls. Now, for detailing and around the arch, I use this one, High Strength Structural Repair and Mortar Mix. Um, what I do is I fill in the gaps with some of the kind of specialty stone that I collect, like slag and the mica detailing. Um, and I use that to fill in the inner crevices with some of those. And I also use that for the arch. So the arch detailing, I use that. And it's a little bit whiter. As you can see right here, the one on the left is the, the regular mortar and the structural mortar is on the right. And I also use it in detailing such as this, the slag I put in, where it's kind of being held in as a, a veneer little bit more sensitive the way I do that but I, I like these little detailings of the slag and here here's a slag I'm gonna end up having to polish it get off all the ac excess and the mica detailings I have throughout I, I use that as well and also I use it around these that I use as a planter so these are just stones that are long and I put them in the edge and then I have the soil on the back with some plants inside. So that's where I use that. So you can see the difference between that and all around the arch is the structural mortar. And today and yesterday I'm going to be using this one, I, I, as you can see, I opened it. It's um, for heat especially, and I'm using that around the pipes. Um, I have kiln fabric I'm using also, so it might be a, a little too much between a kiln fabric and this, because it's not, with the film fabric, it's not letting out a lot of heat, but better safe than sorry. So I use this, I used it with fire brick, and that's probably more what you should be using it for. But I found that it also um, makes, so basically with mortar uh, in general, if it's able to stop water, it's able to stop air. And if it's able to stop air, it's able to stop water. Now I use this for a fire pit that I worked on with, um, with kiln brick. And it literally made this fire pit a swimming, a pond. It was totally waterproof. I had to drill holes in it to get out the water. So I figured it's probably good to use around the pipe so the water doesn't penetrate into the kiln, in, in, rather into the pizza oven. And it's working. It's a very dry pizza oven. When I bought this pizza oven, it was super wet. It was always getting water in it. Um, and now it's completely bone dry. And it really is efficient for pizza ovens. One, from the heat. But also, you don't want water in your pizza oven. It's, I remember before it would take like hours and hours and hours to start to get it going because it was just fighting off all the moisture that would get into the pizza oven because it wasn't properly sealed. So if you're doing anything with pizza ovens, like um, use this and it's expensive. It's about $100 a bag, but it's worth it because you're just going to be struggling with your pizza oven. Um, and this is a little bit more expensive. It's closer to $20 a bag. Uh, and that it used to be five, but it's gone up to seven. So as far as cost, this is the, the big workhorse that, you, that I'm using on this project. And the third one, disregard, that's for a different project. It's a post mortar mix. And that is all folks.
The Keystone um, has been a little bit difficult with all my projects because I am forging for stones, so it takes me a very long time to find the right shaped keystone. But that said, I found some that worked, they locked in place, but it just took me a very long time. Uh, I've seen a lot of pictures of this done, and a lot of times they don't even have a keystone, but I just think it's better to have a keystone. A keystone is essentially like a, a triangle, a chipped off triangle, and it really holds a lot of the pressure. But I did study architecture, and I remember going to an architectural class in Greece, and at the Mycenaean site, they have like a an arch that's a predating arch. And I always thought that was fascinating because it's an arch without a keystone and it looks cathedral-like. So that stood for, what, almost 10,000 years. So uh, I, think, I think I'm fine with my rugged keystone. I'm doing all the precautions. And like I said, a lot of these don't even have keystones, but it's, it's a fascinating, situation the whole idea of the arch and legacy of the arch and the history of the arch and there's just so many layers to peel with that and it's it's better to have a perfect keystone but i was foraging and it would have looked kind of strange to have one stone perfectly keyed and the rest kind of on the river, river rock spectrum So we have an Airbnb and our Airbnb guests were funny during this stage of the project. They were really sweet. They came out and wanted to know what was going on and really supportive. Uh, sometimes I felt comfortable doing 
this job with guests and sometimes I didn't depend on the guests and if they're having a bachelorette party or more of a family or so it was kind of fun these were a special guest we had that kind of encouraged the project a bit So this is the reveal. It took me a while to get it out. Um, the keystone was in place, the pressure from above. Actually with arches, pressure from above actually locks everything and holds it together. So that was secure. It had um, stabilization from the sides. So it was ready to go. And this is, I did this kind of with no one watching because I was afraid if I had people who cared about me watching, they would be terrified and they would really drive me crazy. So I was all by myself. Uh, okay, I did it. No one is here but me, so I'm a little bit shaky. Ooh. So, it seems to be standing okay. As you can see, I, I took apart the side. I forgot about the middle piece, but it ripped off with uh, tension. It seems to be holding okay. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I did it. I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna go under it. If I don't, so it seems pretty, pretty sturdy. This is a rock that fell in, obviously. Get it out of there. And a pillow that kind of got in there somehow. Other than that, it's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna maybe try to wiggle it out the other side or take it off the same way I did this one. Ooh, so, oh, okay.
same size, also may use three previous lead sensors. I'm set to make our new sensors good as the nuts are all the Avengers. Both of these sides were abandoned. A peculiarity of the new century. In the original launch of the site, the display is set up. Ta-da! So, I'm now done with the moon gate. It was quite the project. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you want to see more videos, I have videos coming up with the moon windows. I have two of them coming up and that I need to do to finish this project. And another one on a fountain in the wall. And then this whole project is going to be wrapped up. I have my secret walled moon garden all set. set. Uh, so please like and subscribe and share and support the channel. Uh, and feel free to message me with any questions about my process. I'm sure there's a lot of details that are missing from the video because this was a very big project for me. <laughs> so I don't know if everything is covered. <laughs>